spokesman calls for urgent interventions at public hospitals in Gauteng following a number of incidents in recent months. Some facilities have allegedly run out of food. Psychiatric patients have been forced to be treated in corridors and in some instances we have pregnant women laying on the floor of the Rahima Musa Hospital. Now, one organization calling for interventions to improve the state of affairs is the South African Medical Association. The group's chairperson, Mbuisi Mzugwa, joins us now. Dr. Mzugwa, good evening to you. Thank you for your time. You know, it, it's incredibly alarming to see part of what is unfolding at our country's hospitals. And again, some of these pictures that we're seeing are not new. So it really begs the question why things are seemingly not changing, at least where the quality of services provided to people is concerned. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening to you, uh, Kathy, and your viewers. Um, we are really anxious as the South African Medical Association looking at the state of uh, our institutions in the country. You will have noted uh, recent media reports regarding some of the hospitals in, in Gauteng, uh, where you had uh, patients um, which were uh, seen on the ground. Uh, at some point, you had patients from Chris Paragona uh, Hospital who, who were without food. I mean, that basic need uh, for a patient in the hospital. And many other issues that you, uh, I can think of, not only in Gauteng, but in other hospitals in, in other provinces. So this is what is concerning us that, I mean, if you look at the reports that you see now, it, 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 it paints a picture of a state, host, uh, state institutions that are really uh, going down beyond, beyond you know, what, what is uh, we're used to at the moment. So that's why we're calling upon the government to not take this lightly um, because it, it borders, you know, to around uh, human abuse, uh, human rights abuse, uh, if you look at it. I, I don't think as the South African Medical Association we can sit and tolerate such a, a state of affairs in, in, in our state institutions. The difficulty here is that we've got one academic hospital that has been dysfunctional now for a year, over a year now, and, you know, we don't have a sense of when exactly we can expect it to offer services back fully online. This is in Gauteng. And that means that other hospitals are having to bear the pressure of that. At the same time, we saw a protest recently of medical doctors, including those at Krishani Baragwanath Hospital, that were raising the question of capacity and the fact that they don't have enough capacity to service the number of patients that they have to see on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's been no commitment uh, around those issues. So, yes, Charlotte McLeod is being fixed, but we don't know when the hospital is going to be fully reopened. Uh, and those are, are some of the challenges that, that medical officials are facing. The greatest problem there, Kathy, is the fact that uh, when healthcare workers are complaining about the state of the institutions, you know, especially as it relates to the capacity in terms of human resource, where you have shortages of nurses and doctors, now that leads to burnout, you know, and some of our colleagues, they resign, as you have, may have seen in, in the media reports, uh, resignations from Charlotte McClag and all those things. But you, you've got pe people uh, who are leaving the, 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 the profession, you know, or even moving to other uh, uh, provinces or moving to outside of the country as well. Uh, because, you know, when you do that, Kathy, what, what you simply do is to put the lives of healthcare workers at risk because what normally happens is that communities they tend to fight with uh, 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 healthcare workers simply because they, they be, healthcare workers become the face of, 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 of the healthcare service you know and that's where the, that uh, interface happens where people tend to fight you know our, our healthcare workers so we are saying to government you are putting the lives of healthcare workers at risk by not employing uh, enough uh, people to deliver a quality service to our communities. And uh, we cannot afford to have that, uh, 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 as you know it. 
what is the recourse that we have here? Because when one looks at the patients that have taken up medical negligence cases, even with the Office of the Health Ombudsman, um, you know, some of these cases get stuck there due to process for a number of years. And so even though the health departments collectively across the country lose millions of rand to these claims, it doesn't seem to be changing the input uh, in terms of the quality of services that are being processed in the public health care sector. Exactly, Tessie. Uh, absolutely. That's the point we're making to government, that if you neglect, you know, the state of institutions in the country, what is going to happen is the continuation of that vicious, uh, vicious cycle, where you have uh, uh, litigation and payments, you know, of billions, you know, uh, uh, to litigants. So it, 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 it's a, a really a, a huge problem for the country. And that contributes to the fact that uh, we don't have enough uh, uh, funds, you know, to run the healthcare service. Because all we're simply doing is paying out those uh, litigations. Uh, I think that should come to an end. But also, if the government of the country is not taking this seriously, we are going to find a, a, a point where there's a total collapse of these institutions. Because, you'll, as you will have noted, some of our experienced staff are leaving the institutions. Uh, because they don't want to take this, all this uh, uh, happening on the ground. They are tired of advising government. You know, I don't know if they have ears or whatever the case is, but we've got a government that is going down, a government that is going down the drain, and I don't know how we, we, we are going to rescue this government if they don't implement some of the things that have been advised. For example, you know that in 2018 there was that... Uh, 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 a presidential summit on health and also there was a compact that came out of that and so far it's only the discussions and the uh, planning and discussions and planning but you don't see anything material on the ground that changed the lives of those institutions they are going down there's broken machines uh, they're stinking um, you, you don't feel comfortable that you are in a hospital where you can get, you know, a proper dignified service. Mm. In terms of, you know, you've already mentioned the issue of better capacitation of um, these facilities. What else would you want to see happen? Well, the first thing is that, uh, as you pointed out, we want to see enough staff members in the hospital. But the next thing, there must be the tools of trade. There must be enough of uh, 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 functional uh, x-rays, functional CT scans. They must be in the institutions. There must be a plan of, of services to those uh, 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 scanners. You know, the, 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 the hospital must look like a hospital. It must be clean. It must be healthy. Um, it must be safe for healthcare workers. You remember that there, there's been recently attacks on healthcare workers, you know, some of them being raped, some of them being, uh, 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 you know, marked uh, by, by people in, in, in the premises. What, what, what do we do? Uh, why do we allow such people to go in hospital? You know, such huge numbers of families going into uh, in, in the hospital, you know, and there is no uh, uh, scanners to see if these people are, uh, have got weapons or all those things. It's just get in there willy-nilly, there's no one checking. Even the, the security guards that are sitting there, they are not trained to work in a healthcare institution. They need to be retrained, you know, to, to suit that environment. You can't just take somebody who's working in a supermarket and take that person and say you must go to a hospital and, 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 and provide security services there. So those are all the things, functional cameras, uh, that are there, that are not decorating the walls of the, the institution. So far, those things are not working. Uh, some of these hospitals, it's like you're in a forest. I mean, in Pumalanga, they had to bush, uh, 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 to cut down the bush there because it was like a forest. Uh, those are the things that we're pointing out to government that it must become a, at least a hospital, that if you get in there, you expect some, some, some uh, dignified service. 
You've spoken about the fact that some of these issues have been on the cards and, you know, you bring up that uh, conference held in 2018 and they were really, uh, you, you know, discussed to, uh, uh, and to, 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 they were discussed and brought to the point of exhaustion in terms of what the challenges facing the healthcare sector are. Do you think that government has been accountable? So you as the South African Medical Association, yes, you're raising concerns about it now, but do you think it's going to get any kind of, of response? You, you will know that, uh, Kathy, in this country you've got, um, you know, all these meetings and all these commissions and all these summits, but when it comes to implementation, it's zero, nothing. Nothing ever happens when it comes to implementation. So it, it, the only thing that, that happens is that if you now see an adverse event uh, happening in the hospital, you will see how politicians run to the media uh, to take, you know, even decisions that are contrary to the Labor Relations Act and dismiss somebody uh, in the media without even following those uh, uh, labor relations uh, 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 protocols. Now, this is what we, we, we expect, that if it co continues, the, the healthcare workers will be used as scapegoats, you know, and that is what we are going to be looking out for. And we are, going to, we are not going to let government do that anymore. And on top of that, we want to assure a, a, a government that if, 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 if now we've reached a point where we cannot uh, uh, get each other or uh, understand each other on these basic issues. I think we need to go, you know, an extra mile and discuss if courts can be a, 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 a better a battlefield for all of us. All right. Let's leave it there for tonight. Chairperson of the South African Medical Association, Mbuyisi Mzukwa.